Hello, uh, this is Che from Northeastern University. Um, this is going to be part one of the series for spectral clustering. But before we start, um, I want to give you a general idea of how spectral clustering fit into the big picture. Um, in machine learning, machine learning, you often the, see like this division between supervised learning versus unsupervised learning. Where in supervised learning, you have something you're trying to achieve. You have some kind of input, you want to put into some kind of system, and then you want to achieve something, some kind of output. An example would be, let's say you have like an airplane, right? Airplane. And the input X could be like the altitude measurement, or altitude measurement, or the wind speed, whatever. These are the input you put in. And uh, the output could be things like certain controls that you could apply to the airplane to keep it stable instead of going down. So this is the type of uh, learning where it's called supervised, where you have some kind of, um, some kind of desired output that is controlling what should be happening. Now, with unsupervised learning is, well, you just have some kind of data and you want to learn, like, what can this data tell you? Is there some kind of a inherent structure that you can learn from the data? And that's where um, this spectral clustering or just clustering in general comes into the picture. Clustering is an unsupervised approach that essentially groups similar data together. I mean, there are many definitions, but for, you, for your purpose, that's what clustering is. You look at data and you group similar ones together. Let me give you like a quick example. Let's say you have a list of bunch of data, right? Like you have X, like X and Y data here and here and here. And if you just look at the numbers, it's kind of hard to tell that what they just seem kind of random. It's hard to tell what they are. Of course, if you were to plot them out, each dot as a point, you can start saying, hey, there's some kind of um, group. They either belong here or they belong to this group. And then you can go over each point and say, oh, yeah, this is group one. This is group one. This is group two, group one, group two, so on and so forth. Of course, this is doable if you only have a couple data sets. But what if you have like a million or even a billion or a trillion? You don't want to be doing this one at a time. This is or this is going to, you know, really take a while. Also, right now it's easy to plot this data out into two dimensions. And you can it's easy to see the group in two dimensions. But not all data are in two dimensions. Some are in three, some are in four, some even like tenth dimension could even happen. So at this point, if you if you can be any dimension, is there some kind of um procedure? or algorithm that you can do that automatically, the key is automatically, that you can either write a program to call me automatically. You can write a program that just goes through each one of them and automatically label them for you and like this without needing to plot it out. Well, that's what that's what clustering is for. And therefore, um, that's why we're going to go over some approaches. The most popular approaches right now are, well, there's k-mean. That's very popular. Gaussian mixture model, expectation maximization, the spectral clustering. Needless to say, the topic of today is spectral clustering. Um, first, I want to I wanna group the three of them together. This is because they kind of perform and react similarly. And this one, spectral clustering, is actually a different beast. And the best way to show this is that these three, if you were to try to cluster something like this, 
it will give you a, the cost of that makes sense. Divide it in half, and um, and um, it kind of makes sense into the top and the bottom part. But if you had used spectral clustering, it would have done this, which makes more sense. And then you can argue that in this case, spectral clustering uh, provides a superior, uh, depending on, I guess, your perspective, um, a different clustering result than the traditional k-means. So if you were to learn k-means and spectral clustering, these two approaches, it would really help you um, in to cluster some of your data that you might want. And they will provide two different approaches to, um, to, to clustering. So um, before we go on, like I'm going to obviously go over some background instead of just jumping to spectral clustering. But there are some assumptions that we must make. Um, first, you should know how to do matrix multiplication, like A times B. That, I mean, that's very basic, or just the most basic linear algebra. Like, how do you do A transpose? Or stuff such as, um, I don't know, very A inverse, stuff like that. You should know how to do these things. And if you don't, I would. I was going to teach it, but I realized there's just so many videos out there that already does that. So that doesn't make sense. Learn them first. Make sure you know how to do basic matrix multiplication. And also, you should know how to take derivatives. This is like calculus 101. And um, of course, we're going to do more than that. But this is the most basic stuff you guys should know. And there are lots of video tutorials out there on how to do them. So make sure you cover these two materials. And now I'm going to break down the videos I'm going to teach. First, um, today's video is essentially just an intro on all the topics. And uh, tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, whenever I feel like it, I will go over the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That's part of the linear algebra. It's still basic, but I'll cover it. Now. Next, I'm, we're going to find the derivative of this. Now, x is a vector. A is a matrix, and x is vector. So how do we take derivative of this? Um, that's going to be one of the videos. Then we want to find how we can maximize this if we subject it to, subject it to uh, x times x transpose is equal to 1. Of course, we can use Le Le Lagrange multiplier which implies really got to know your derivatives. Then we'll go over some k-means. And finally, the residual or rest of the videos will be spectral clustering. I'm not really sure how many videos we're going to need for spectral clustering, but whatever after 6 should be all spectral clustering. Now, the reason why I have this like intro is so that you can basically watch the process which this will unfold. So this is important to watch. But if you know these material already, you can, for the most part, just jump right to spectral clustering. If you don't, you need to watch them first. So it depends. Different people are at different levels. And um, therefore, I didn't want to just jump into spectral clustering immediately. Anyways, um, well, that's all. I guess in the next video, we will start going over the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. Bye-bye.